Commissioner, when you look at what Europe wants, a lot of countries want more integration. Others want to maybe tone down the integration. What are the Germans at? Do, do, are they getting a little bit more cold feet than maybe six months ago on banking union, capital markets union, and getting closer together? Well, it took time after the elections for uh, the German government to be formed. Uh, it has been done recently. Uh, the country is maybe more divided than it used to be. It has its own cultural stability. Uh, the political balance is quite difficult to strike. And this can explain why, I wouldn't say they're reluctant, but they are careful. Uh, but I think that they need to understand that the situation in Europe is as well positive for the economy and complex politically and that they need to take their responsibility as economic leaders and to show that, well, their tradition of risk reduction must be respected, but that they also need to show solidarity. And that means also taking Mr. Macron's and the Commission's hand in order to reinforce the uh, economic and monetary union to have a eurozone which is stronger for all its members and also to recreate the tools to converge right. for our economies, to reduce inequalities. Um, Commissioner, can, can any good come of the, of the trade war, uh, a possible trade war between the U.S. and China? And I'm not talking about economically, but we've heard in the last 18 months, 24 months, that uh, European countries lacked commonality. Now they have something to try and avoid together. Well, you, you cannot define uh, yourself against another one. Uh, but we must not be divided by that. Uh, there is no French, German, Italian uh, interest in that. As far as trade is concerned, we are all together. The Commission is responsible for negotiating on trade. Uh, my colleague Malmström uh, is in charge of that. I will meet Wilbur Ross in a few minutes. I met yesterday Stephen Mnuchin. Uh, I saw people in the White House and I think that we must uh, get down uh, on the tone on that. Uh, trade war is mm -hmm. as every war. It's bad. Uh, uh, nothing, nobody wins. It's lose-lose. And uh, we need to fight protectionism. Here we are in the temple of multilateralism. We'll be in a G20 meeting in a few seconds. And there uh, we must say protectionism is not a solution. It is a problem. And we must do that all together. But that's not enough uh, for Europe. For Europe, we really need to integrate more where it's necessary, mm -hmm. not everywhere. I'm not asking for a federal Europe, but I'm saying uh, there are items uh, such as migration, uh, trade that you mentioned, uh, uh, monetary union, uh, on which we must make decisive progress in order to have more investment, to have a, 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 a better and stronger growth for the future. Secretary Mnuchin is also giving you the gift of a trillion dollar deficit, and it seems like chronic trillion dollar American deficits. How does that affect Europe? You're in a recovery, and yet the story of this IMF is a U.S. that has a tone of fiscal irresponsibility. How does that affect Europe? Well, there are short-term effects, macroeconomically, long-term effects that we cannot really foresee, and there are political effects. For the short-term effects, they are positive, since uh, the American growth is uh, picking up. Uh, and with a, a booming American uh, economy, it's good for the rest of the world because we are uh, partners, allies, we uh, exchange together. There is no trade war for the time being. Uh, so that's good. For the medium term, as always, when you've got a high debt and a high deficit, you need to watch that carefully uh, to avoid uh, imbalances. Uh, and this is not only for Europe, this is worldwide. Politically, uh, our situation is not the same. Uh, we have a high debt. We don't have the privilege of having the world currency, which is the dollar. Uh, so we must still be careful about uh, our public and private debt. And as right. Madame Lagarde said, uh, uh, debt is still the problem for the future. The, the two main risks for growth, which is now very solid all over the world, are on the one hand protectionism mm -hmm. and trade tensions, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, uh, debt. And our Pop culture in Europe must not change. We must reduce right. debts because without, Commissioner, without it, that we, we, we cannot finance our public services. Is it easier to actually sell austerity to the Europeans than it is to the US? As a political, you were a politician before, do, do we talk about it differently? And this was a point, Tom, that you were making about, yesterday. About austerity. I, 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 was, I'm, I'm, I was not a politician. I'm, I'm still a political appointee. Uh, being a commissioner is uh, being a, a political uh, appointee. Uh, and so I, I think about that politically. I, I never was in favor of austerity. 
Austerity is when uh, you become poorer and you cannot develop public services, you cannot invest. You need to be serious and that's somehow different. Uh, that means that you need to reduce your debt, you need to reduce your deficits, our rules are there for that. But you can also apply these rules with flexibility and that's what we've done. We, we never punished or, 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 or made constraints to one of our member states, neither Portugal, neither Spain, neither Italy, neither France. And this was positive because at the same time they reduced their debt. The average uh, uh, deficit per year is under 1% in Europe uh, and that is uh, getting down and we did that without austerity. Uh, that's the same case with Greece. I hope that now in a, in a few moments we will have Greece out of its program uh, because, uh, uh, well, being serious must not damage growth. And, and that's, that balance yeah. uh, is the one we are you, looking for. You mentioned here at the IMF in this beautiful atrium, the temple of multilateralism. Great. Four blocks down is the temple of my way or the highway. How does Europe adapt to President Trump in his claim of a bilateral discussion, which everyone agrees is my way or the highway, do you wait out the President of the United States or do you sense a structural change in American negotiations with its allies? That's the least we can say. Uh, the change with President Trump and his team is huge. Uh, and well, well, the words I pronounce, multilateralism, uh, refusal of protectionism, uh, fighting climate change, it, it's not really in the vocabulary and in the culture of this administration. Uh, so, uh, we know that we need to, to, to defend our own values. Uh, I, I don't mean against Trump. Uh, okay. tr Europe cannot be built against Trump, but for our own sake. But at the same time, we have to negotiate, we have to discuss with the administration. Right. Here I meet but everybody and, and we are trying to establish with them the best possible uh, discussion uh, climate. Okay. But longer term, could this actually hurt growth? And I'm not talking about US growth, I'm talking about US growth and world growth and therefore European growth. I, I said there is short term effect, which is positive, and, and medium term effects uh, have to be uh, certainly calibrated. Uh, uh, first, we need to uh, avoid the fact that at one moment uh, the economy seems to be overheated. Uh, and, and the second thing is protectionism uh, uh, is really a pain for the economy for various reasons. Uh, uh, for itself, but also for the climate, mm -hmm. uh, for what uh, the message it sends mm -hmm. to markets who don't like this, for the risk Will of we volatility. Have a trade war? No, uh, I'm, I'm quite sure. Here in Washington, I told you that we are different from the Trump administration by all means, but at the same time, we respect them. They are legitimate here. They've been elected and they run the country. And so uh, I think the messages we are uh, trying to define together, and again, I met a few of them, mm -hmm. uh, are that uh, we need to avoid that trade war, uh, that finally we need to refuse protectionism, uh, that we need to defend free trade, even an organized free trade. Uh, we need certainly to resolve some problems. Uh, the overcapacity so, still in China are a problem, uh, but we need to resolve them together. Okay, but in 20 seconds, so you're saying those US officials told you that actually they were ready to ratchet down the rhetoric? I wouldn't say that, I'm not a spokesman, but I feel that the climate is a climate of exchange of views, not of imposing views, neither of uh, uh, confronting views. And uh, th that's through dialogue, dialogue with, between different people, mm -hmm. thinking differently, that we will find a way.